What is Sony doing in Africa? Why is, why is Sony here? So Sony Music is a global music company and I think you know, from my previous job sat in London I think we looked at and every, like everyone does and they have the stats and there's a big blank space for Africa in, in, in a lot of cases but you know that's clearly not the case um, you know there is a very rich vibrant industry right across the continent at the moment and as a music company it, it's our desire to, to engage with that um, both from um, the perspective of working with artists developing talent and investing in in, in artists um, but also building distribution and building great services and, and making sure that, that fans can access the, the, the best music and the, you know, the, the repertoire that, that they want. And you're also interested in, in, in investing in local artists. You've got, you've got an investment in a um, local record label. Tell us about that. Yeah, that's right. So there's, there's a couple of um, partnerships that we have. We have uh, one partnership um, with a company called Rockstar 4000, who have um, a network of people across the, the continent. Um, and working very closely with them, um, with our relationships with, with artists across the continent. Um, and then there's also um, some direct signings that... And we were talking earlier about how um, people like DeBange and P-Squared looked like breakout artists two years ago. Um, what has happened since then in terms of them on the continent? The impact of Nigerian music can, can definitely be felt everywhere. And I think... Uh, Going back to the Uganda example for a moment, there's very strong local artists here. There's very strong interest in international US, European repertoire as well. Um, but also in terms of international African repertoire, then, then Nigeria is, is definitely the, the repertoire centre that um, is kind of riding the, the pan-African wave at the moment. And it's music that travels. Very much so, yeah. Look, I think that the, um, the production quality out of Lagos has got to a point where um, it travels very well and it, it's, a, it's of excellent quality. I'm not saying the quality of the music out of anywhere else uh, isn't, isn't such, but um, I think that the, the music repertoire that's coming out of there you know, is obviously of a, of a kind of different uh, quality right now because um, it's, yeah, it, it's, it's traveling everywhere at the moment. And you're here in part to look at um, online platforms. Again, you're, you're starting the journey, so tell me what your impressions are at the start of this journey. So the big story, I guess, that everyone's talking about is the proliferation of mobile networks and internet and smartphones and the rest of it. And the exciting thing is that we are at the beginning of, of what could really turn into um, a very compelling and strong content distribution network. We already have that at the, at the kind of you know, beginning stage of the ringback tone and that's working exceptionally well. And how big is the ringback tone market? Well, we've done kind of a few back of the envelope um, uh, bits of maths and if you sort of assume that you're looking at about 20% penetration in a lot of markets mm. and around 25 cents a month being paid, um, then you're looking at a gross market worth of maybe four or five hundred million US dollars. Um, that's at the, the gross level that's actually yeah. being passed over from the consumer. Um, obviously, within that value chain, there's, there's lots of people, the operators, the aggregators, the labels, and so on. Um, but, but certainly, that indicates that people are paying for music and that there is a market there. Yeah. And we, from a, from a music company perspective, want to make sure um, that, you know, that that continues to work and also that the artists, both locally and, and our own, um, can derive value from that and uh, make sure that we can continue to, to invest in new talent and, uh, and grow the business. And there's um, online music labels out there. Just give me a, a brief overview of the ones you've noticed here in Africa. Look, there's a few um, primarily coming out of Nairobi and Lagos and um, in the same way as that there's a lot of tech in innovation coming out, out of those uh, Western and East African hubs at the moment. And as a result of creating a music service, um, you know, they've, they've generated a, um, you know, a real uh, impetus and momentum around that um, and attraction for local artists. And I think that's, that 
signifies that there is a huge interest and demand for people for these types of services. So, you know, we're, we're working working with those guys. I think as as you know, the whole international music community is talking to to these companies who are kind of you know, first there, and we want to make sure that we can work with those types of companies to to you know to, to grow mutually. There's also international platforms coming in like Deezer and Spotify. And um, you were saying iTunes. iTunes has now moved outside of Africa? Yeah, that's right. So iTunes is live in a number of markets. I think it's six or seven markets now um, across Africa. Um, yeah, you have the likes of streaming services like Deezer, um, who are live everywhere, and also through their partnership um, with uh, France Telecom and Orange are, are live as well. And so we're starting to see more and more interest from, from international companies, and that's something that we obviously want to continue to, to encourage as well. Um, because and we, iTunes is live in, you were saying, Nigeria and Ghana. Yeah, I think um, certainly Nigeria, Ghana, and West Africa, and I think uh, certainly Tanzania, uh, Kenya, Uganda, and, and I think a couple of others. As well. Okay. And so, if you were to look back in three years' time, what would you count as a success, in both in personal and company terms, um, from your time? I, I think it would be great if we could be delivering services to fans that meet their needs in, t in terms of any repertoire that yeah. they want in, in the format that they like. And I think that the formats and the services that we have kind of grown used to perhaps in other parts of the world aren't necessarily going to be the ones that, that work here. So we have to discover what those are. Um, and then we also have to make sure that, that all the content is there. So if someone who is in Uganda, for example, they can access Bebe Cool, Debanj, and R. Kelly all on the same service in, in the right format for them. That, that's, our, that's our aim. We think it's achievable and possible. Um, there's you know, obviously a few things that we have to negotiate on the way, but uh, we certainly see that as a, as a possibility.